James Kaufman, World News Report today, July 29, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, NOAA says to expect our first geomagnetic storm today. Thus far, we see no occurrences, not even a geomagnetic disturbance. I will keep you updated. This is today here. And the most we've seen on our KP index, so our estimated planetary KP index, is a KP 2.33. Not even close to geomagnetic storm levels, although we know we have several coronal mass ejections created by solar flares and filament eruptions inbound currently. Over to Discover Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite, just for verification, no plasma over 10 centimeters cubed. Our shields are down here in pink. Solar wind started the day at 400 and they are down in the 330 range. Nothing going on whatsoever. Now, if you saw my NOAA warning, they actually produced that warning without considering everything that's occurred today. Let me go over everything that's occurred today first. We started the day out with an X 1.57 solar flare directly earth facing generated from sunspot AR 3766 which peaked at 237 UTC time that was followed by a very small M1 out of a new sunspot or newly active sunspot AR 3768 it peaked at 520 in the morning UTC time following that we actually had an M1.4 solar flare, and that is to be determined as far as where it came from. That might have been a filament eruption. That occurred at 12.30 UTC time. That was followed quickly by an M8.69 solar flare that peaked around 106. That's going to be right here, folks. Now, with that said, and that's the 1-4 right there. With that said, following that, we had an M4.2 solar flare that was generated by AR3766 as well. This peaked at 1445. And since then, we've had no M or X-class solar flares. So that tells us just today we had an X flare to start with. Followed by one, two, three, four, four M class solar flares. Now, over the last three day period, we've had 15 M flares directly earth facing and one X 1.57 class solar flare, all directly earth facing. This is definitely an uncharted territory. Over to spaceweatherlive.com, they have it so mixed up. They're actually in reverse order for the first time ever. So, kind of. This was the first hit of the day here, besides the C9.1, uh, and occurred on the 29th, which is still a strong flare. We did not mention any C flares here. But our first big flare was the X1.57 here, peaked at 237. And this does not list all of the flares that I just listed for you. Uh, the next one they list is the M1 that peaked at 520. And the larger M4.2 that we mentioned peaking at 1446 out of AR3765. So we have 3768, 3765, and 3766. What is strange is 3768 and 3765 are now beta, delta, gamma, whereas 3766 has become less complex even after or while expelling an X1.57 solar flare. Now, they've moved us up to a 20% chance of having another X flare today, a 75% chance of an M-class solar flare, which we've had four thus far today, and a 99% chance of a C-flare running a C-3 baseline currently. 
That should always be at 100% until we drop below that C baseline. Over to HMI Intensogram, we'll start out with 37.66, the cause of the X 1.57 solar flare, the M 4.2 solar flare, and it could be the cause of the M 8.69 solar flare. We don't have that information, although that could have been a filament eruption. We will be watching that movie. Next, we'll take a look at Sunspot AR. 3768, which is morphed into a beta delta gamma sunspot, the most complex sunspot known. It doesn't look very complex, but in fact, they say it is. Now, the other sunspot we're dealing with is AR3765 and AR3765 is right here. Definitely looks very complex. It is now a beta delta gamma sunspot whereas the one that produced the two larger flares that we know of today the x1.57 and one of the larger m flares the m 4.2 solar flare that peaked at 445 is not as complex as it was yesterday just a alpha gamma sunspot group now, heading over to Lasco C3, we can see that there's an ongoing halo eruption after eruption after eruption. I'm sure they'll say that was a backside event after eruption. And that's going to be the M4.2 right there. One of the smaller flares. We had an X1.57 and we had an M. 8.69 and the M8.69 was around one UTC time and that can be contributed to anything you see here nothing but a halo eruption all day long today with lots of missing time to make it interesting very little information to gather off of Lasco C3 it's not like well, it used to be. We'll put it like that. Now, this is our GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager 195 Angstroms. We see activity here uh, and activity out of the large bunch of sunspots here, but nothing in the last hour over, well, nothing extensive in the last hour to point out here. I wanted you to see some of the sunspots that are coming around. I believe that this sunspot here is the one that produced the X14 class solar flare. It should be named by tomorrow morning and will become more earth facing as it transits our solar disk over the next 12 days. Now, NOAA did come in this morning and make some slight adjust, uh, adjustments. You can see that it looks like a one, two, three punch here. And this is all happening on the 30th, although they said in their release just a few moments ago, that this should start today on the 29th. I do want to point out that they've moved the plasma peak up to around 60 centimeters cubed and had heavy plasma hitting at about the 40 centimeter cube range and higher almost all day long. And the 30th starts at 7 p.m. Central tonight. So y'all get your tinfoil hats out. They also have solar winds jumping up around 10 p.m. this evening, Central Time, around 3 UTC time on the 30th. Those jump to about 500 and then continue up to about 600, maybe a little bit higher than 600. Those last into the 31st. They don't have the plasma lasting into the 31st. I'm going to tell you all right now it's going to last into the 1st or 2nd based on all the activity we've seen of late. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, we'll see the last few flares here. This is the M1.4 that peaked at 12.30 here. That was followed by the M8.69 right here. Very, very strong flare. Peaked right at 1 UTC time, as you can see here. And we don't get to see the X flare on the D region absorption, although we did last night. If you take a look at my live show, 
And our next large flare is going to be at 1447. That's going to be the M4.2 solar flare, our 3766. And I believe that's the end of the larger flares, although everyone's enjoying a very large dose of radiation all day long, period. All right, now moving over to SCO. We're looking for this region and two regions here and some filament eruptions as well. We'll start over on the left at 193 angstroms and we'll take it slow. And we see a lot of activity here. And we just saw the X flare there. It's going to start our day. Then we have an eclipse here. See what other activity we can spot here. Whoa, another large flare, probably the 8.91. We also saw the filament eruption. Jump it over to 171 angstroms. We'll let it roll. We see activity here. We should see the directly Earth facing X flare here. Let's see an eclipse. And we might have missed the X flare. We see that 8.9 and then that film eruption, very large indeed. But we're not getting all the data in yet. This has all just happened. Take one more look at the X flare here. Directly Earth facing. Whoa, there it was. You can't get any more directly Earth facing than that. And all of these flares. If they generate a chrome mass ejection, which uh, all of them should have, will be geo-effective towards Earth, period. We'll take a look at this 8-9 right there, and then that film eruption right there, which really has not been put in play with anything we've discussed. Hopefully it's on a part of the sun that won't be geo-effective towards Earth. All right, speaking about the backside of the sun, this is 002. We probably dealt with the sunspot before, probably the sunspot that generated the X14 flare, and it should be named by tomorrow. This was taken on the 27th, halfway through the day. We also have 003, 004, multiple sunspots here, and 005. You can see much of those here on Gong. All right. Over to STO HMI magnetogram. Here she comes. I believe that to be the sunspot that generated the X14 class solar flare. It actually affected Earth, although the flare went the opposite way. We've had that happen once or twice before. This was taken at 1800 UTC time on the 29th, so it is very, very recent. We're dealing with all these sunspots and these directly Earth facing sunspots. I'd like to say this is a reverse polarity sunspot here that created the X flare because we see black over white, and I would guess that that's the northern hemisphere. We should always see white over black, and this is questionable. Uh, these are very complex sunspots. Several of them are alpha, delta, gamma, as we discussed, whereas this morphed into a less obtrusive sunspot group. Over to Soho, 284 angstroms. This was taken at 7.06 Central Time this morning. And we can see the two sunspot group areas we're dealing with here. And we can see that sunspot I keep warning y'all about that will probably be named tomorrow and take 12 days to transit the Earth-facing side of our solar disk. Uh, this could even bring more activity or should bring even more activity towards Earth. Headed over to the ESA. It doesn't look like they've had any changes made yet. Again, it is Monday and they don't regularly start working until Tuesday. They have plasma inbound though for the 30th, about 65 centimeters cubed, uh, with maybe a double hit here. Starting out at around 33, 34 centimeters cubed and peaking at over 60 centimeters cubed. They have solar winds going up to about 550. On the 30th, on the 30th, today's the 29th, although Noah just warned that these impacts should start on the 29th, and for them, that's over at 7 p.m. Central here in the U.S. 
And finally, over at NASA's Gooder is with Spiral, they have modeled nothing yet. Nothing yet. Now, I do know it is complex and going to be very hard to model, but you would think that they would have attempted to model some of these coronal mass ejections. Again, we had 15 M flares and one X 1.57 solar flare. Nothing has been modeled. Where did all the money go? God bless you and yours, folks. Please share our videos. Please subscribe. And always remember, anything's possible in bizarro world. God bless you all.